The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Douglas, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34512. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new vehicle. Starting just under the front bumper on the passenger and driver's side frame rail, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. Moving up onto the face of the bumper, you'll find your electronic siren just inside of that location. You'll find air horns. Moving over to the driver's side, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker system. Moving to the bumper extension side, you'll find emergency warning lights on the side extension. Moving up into the tubbed storage area, you'll find your hose storage and also a swivel discharge. Moving up to the headlight structure, you'll find low and high beam headlights. The inter beam on the inside is the high beam and the outside is the low beam. Moving up, you'll find an emergency warning light and turn indicator. You'll also find a marker light on the A pillar. Moving up to the windshield area, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one piece windshield. As we move to the outer edge, you'll find mirrors housing a flat and convex mirror. Moving up to the brow, you'll find five clearance lights. And then up to the very top on the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items that we just talked about. First, let's start with the bumper extension area. This is your tubbed hose storage location with a swivel inch and a half discharge located in the lower section. As you look to the very lower section, there is dry deck material in the very bottom for airflow. Let's move now up to the windshield and top to the brow where you'll find your five clearance lights and your emergency warning light bar. Let's move around now to the driver's side of the vehicle where you'll find once again on the bumper extension the side facing emergency warning light. As we move just inside of that location to the door space, you'll find a air inlet and then moving up to the marker light on the A pillar. As we move up, you'll find at points of entry for personnel, the door handles are easily accessible with a gloved hand. They are keyed lock, and then you'll also find grab handles for gaining entrance in and out of the vehicle. As we move just over the front tire, you'll find the location for your auto eject shore power plug. Some close-ups of the items we just talked about. As we move to the step well, this is where you'll find the air inlet. Moving now directly over the front tire is where you'll find your auto eject. This is a 20 amp shoreline inlet auto eject plug. When plugged in, you will find that your delta volt will activate indicating charge. Let's take a look at the mirrors. You'll find at the very top portion is the flat portion as the lower portion is convexed. Moving now back to the rear cab step area, you'll find the light in the step area. General view here of the door handle and grab handle. Let's move now to the pump panel area. First, let's start in the upper left-hand corner of the midship pump. This is going to be your cross lay, housing three cross lays. As we move now to the netting in the downward position, there are two dividers dividing into three spaces for your cross lay. As we move downward, we'll identify a few areas starting first in the red upper section. The module is going to be your Husky foam system. We'll go through all of the modules and then we'll focus in individually on each one of them. Once again, the foam system in red, you also have a foam level indicator, LED lights. Moving to the gray module area is where you'll find your master intake. Just to the right of that, you'll find your master discharge gauge. Moving further to the right, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. And then moving further to the right, you'll find a set of switches in the gray area, which is also an OK to pump indicator light. As we move down, we have the gauges and valves clustered. So you can see on the very far left hand side, these are your cross lays, cross lay one, two, and the two and a half inch cross lay. As we move to the right, you'll find your deluge discharge. Moving further to the right, you'll find the purple front discharge. That's the bumper load. As we move further to the right, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line. 
As we move to the blue module on the far right, this is your water level indicator for your water tank. As we move down to the next cluster of valves, you'll find the number one, number two, and number three, two and a half inch discharges. You'll also find your minimum operation maintenance schedule, which we'll go over in a moment. Passenger side, large diameter discharge. Moving further to the right, you'll find your real discharge. Moving all the way to the right hand side is where you'll find your tank to pump. And then all the way to the very fall, far wall next to the vertical sheet is where you'll find your fire pump primer, which is an air prime. Let's move down to the next section where we'll find first starting in the upper left hand corner, the two, two and a half inch discharges on the driver's side, your large diameter pump inlet. Moving further to the right, you'll find your foam filling system. We'll go over that in a few moments. As we move down to the very bottom section, you'll find a two and a half inch passenger side auxiliary inlet, discharge drains, and then also we'll find an access panel, which we'll talk about the contents behind it in a few moments. At the very top, your master pump drain, and then moving further down to the very bottom right hand side, your manual pump shift. Let's go back up to the red module, which is your Husky Foam System 3. As we start at the very top, you'll find actual operating instructions on the device one through four. The system on off is on your left hand side. It's a green button. As we move down, we'll find a digital readout for the foam percentage displaying. As we also move down, you'll find two gray buttons, increase or decrease. And then moving to the right, you'll find the yellow prime button. All the way to the right hand side is where you'll find your system status lights. Those are indicating the system status lights, indicating green, yellow, red. There's a combination of those and those can be found in the system status lights in section four. Moving just to the right, we'll find the gray area. Once again, this is your master intake gauge. Moving further to the right is where you'll find your master discharge gauge. And then there are two ga uh, test gauge ports in the lower section for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged in for testing purposes. Let's move to the right where you'll find your throttle pressure governor. There's a digital display in the upper portion indicating the pump engaged, okay to pump, and throttle ready. As we move down to the red, you'll find a red idle button allowing your vehicle to move to the idle position. To the right, you'll find a preset button if you choose to set presets for pressure or throttle. And to the right, you'll find yellow, increase and decrease. Moving down to the left, you'll find the menu and also combination silence button. The menu button allows you to scroll through the various functions of your throttle pressure governor. To the right, you'll find the green button. This is the mode button allowing you to select either PSI or RPM. And down at the very bottom, you'll find diagnostic engine information. Down the lower right corner, you'll find an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen the sound or increase the sound. To the right, you'll find a green indicator light OK to pump, indicating you've properly engaged your pump. Here's some close-ups of the number one, number two, and two and a half inch cross light. You'll see if it has water and foam in red, indicating that it is a foam capable discharge. Moving to the right, you'll find your specification placard and then also your master stream device. Moving further to the right, front discharge, tank refill. We've clustered once again, the two and a half inch discharge, one, two, and three. As we move to the right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for your vehicle. It's a 1,500 GPM pump. You have 150, 200, and 250 PSI test pressures. As you move to the right-hand side of the placard, you'll find the associated RPM for that individual test pressure. Your vehicle does have a governed speed of 2,390 RPMs. Let's move down now to the right where you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge. It is the large wheel in green. And as we move to the right, you'll find a twist, your engine cooler, open, turn to left, close, turn to the right. As we move down, you'll find your fire pump primer is a push to prime. We do also have instructions here regarding that priming for enhanced priming, at least 1000 RPM for best practices. Let's move further down on the pump panel. We'll start on the very far left. Only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they received proper training. As we move down, you'll find your associated and color coded labeled discharge drains. To the right, you'll find your driver's side auxiliary inlet. And then just above that, you'll find the minimum operation maintenance schedule for your vehicle. Let's move just to the right of this location. We'll first start on the left-hand side with your 
Pierce American Flag Eagle. This is the cap housing the main suction inlet. To the right, you'll find your warning regarding foam failure. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. As we move to the right, you'll find the valve for draft and tank. Those are section locations for foam fill operations. As we move down, the red placard is your watchers placard in the, the type of pump that you have. And then to the right, you'll find your pump drain. And then just beneath that, you'll find your manual pump shift. We do have a caution label also associated with it, manual pump shift. Let's move into the pan door where you'll find your foam fill operations. The instructions are clearly marked on the door on the back of it. And as we move inside, you'll find the yellow handle that should match the locations on the door for whichever operation you're choosing. Let's move back now to the drains on the right hand side, clearly color coded and labeled. As we look under the area of the pump panel, it's where you'll find this section, which is going to house all of your drains. This is going to be for your foam drain and then also for your foam pump intake drain. Let's take a look at the side of the vertical sheet here where you have steps going access, which are full down for going aloft. Let's take a look at the body section. You'll find just in front of the rear axle a marker turn indicator. As we move up just above the wheel area, you'll find two locations for SCBA bottle storage. Located directly over the rear axle is where you'll find your side facing emergency warning light. As we move upward to the very top, you'll find a step light because of those steps that fold down. That's for gaining access to the top area and illumination. To the very rear, you'll find a 360 degree emergency warning light. Let's take a look with the compartments in the open position. You'll find adjustable shelving in a few of those compartments and also LED lighting on the right and left side of the compartment. Let's take a look into the SCBA bottle storage. Housing also SCBA bottle storage with retaining straps, you'll also find the blue cap, which is your 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Moving just to the rear of the axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage, and then also your silver cap, which is your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel only. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify a few items here. First, let's start with the obvious. This is gonna be emergency, brake, turn, and reverse lights. At the very top section, you'll find emergency warning lights, 360 degrees. And at the very top, you'll find your two work light slash scene lights. Let's look underneath the rear area where you'll find clearance lights or perimeter lighting. You'll also find in the very center a tow attachment point and then also clearance lights just up above that location. As we move to the rear section near the center roll-up door, you'll find at the top a discharge two and a half inch. You'll also find some warning labels here. Ha uh, entanglement because of hoses coming from aloft. Do not ride on the vehicle while it's in motion and be cautioned when climbing on the vehicle. As we move to the top, this is the driver's rear discharge. It's a two and a half inch discharge. Let's take a look at the roll-up door in the open position. You can see there's LED lighting inside. Let's move just to the right of the door location where you'll find an additional pan door. This is going to be the storage location for your ground ladders. You have a 24 foot two section ladder, a 14 foot roof ladder with hooks. And as we move up to the very top section, this is the storage location for your pike poles and long handled tools. Just to the right of that location, you'll find a folding attic ladder, which is a 10 foot ladder. Let's move all the way up to the very top. There are two vertical dividers for your rear hose bed. Let's take a look at the top section. You can see in the very front, you'll see your water tower and also foam tower. On the left is the water tank. Moving to the right, this is your foam tank A. We do have a warning label here indicating do not mix different brands or consistencies. Once again, on the left is your foam tank. Let's take a look. There is an overflow location here. It is the round portion and then also a strainer, which you can reach in and pull out for cleaning. As we move to the right, you'll find your foam tank. On the top of that foam tank is where you'll find that warning label regarding not mixing different brands or consistencies for the possibility of foam failure. Let's move to the dunnage area. In the very center, you'll find your large diameter master stream device. As we move to the right, you'll find your Husky foam system. This is the hydraulic pump. And as you can see, this is the hydraulic oil fill location. Let's go ahead and move now to the passenger side body area. Uh, the configuration is gonna be virtually the same. Three roll-up doors on this side 
SCBA bottle storage in the same location in front of and rear of the rear axle. But let's go ahead and take a look inside the compartments. You can find LED lighting inside. We'll start at the rear compartment first. Adjustable shelving in the rear compartment. As we move to the forward compartment, you'll also find an adjustable shelf. Once again, LED lighting on both sides of the compartment. As we move now, a little different here, we have three SCBA bottle storage locations in front of and also rear of the axle. Let's go ahead and move now to the midsection of your vehicle. Let's start at the very top section with your crosslay. You're going to have three crosslays. These are the same through crosslays as you do on the driver's side. As we move downward from this location, you'll find the cab tilt module. We do have some caution and warning labels here. It's important to make sure that you check for overhead clearances and also secure all items within the cab. To raise, we have instructions, and also to lower, we have instructions actually on the placard. You have an activate button down in the lower right-hand corner, a protected switch for raise and lower on the left. As we move further down, you'll find a Pandora and then also the Pierce American Flag Eagle large diameter passenger side intake. Moving to the right, this is your green large diameter discharge, and then to the right, you'll find the two and a half inch discharge on the passenger side. Got a little bit better image here on the right hand side. Once again, number two, passenger side discharge, two and a half inch. Across the very bottom, we'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go ahead and move now to the passenger side of the vehicle. Same configuration as the driver's side. Let's go ahead and tilt the cab, identify a few items within the engine area. First, we'll start with our power steering fluid. This is the sight gauge and fill location. As we move to the right, you'll find the yellow dipstick for your engine oil. Moving further to the right, you'll find the fill location for your transmission fluid. As we move to the very front section, you'll find the fill location for your radiator reservoir for your coolant. And as we move to the battery area, you're going to find in the lower portion, this is the fill location for your hydraulics for tilting the cab. We also do have some danger and warning labels located on the frame rail. Please take a look at those when you have the opportunity. Let's go ahead and move now to the driver's door panel where you'll find this yellow labeled affixed to the door panel. We'll go over that in a moment. Also, all of our caution, warning, and safety information affixed to the door panel. Let's go back to the yellow placard. This is going to be the date of manufacture, five-digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, fluid capacities for the component, and also fluid capacity type for each fluid. Let's move inside the cab now to the operator seat where you'll find comfort controls in the very front left portion of the seat. As we move now just inside the cab, you'll find it about the left knee. This is the area we'll start down at the lower section. This is your master battery switch in the upper left hand corner. As we move to the right, this is your engine transmission ABS J1939 diagnostic port. As we move down, you'll find the ABS diagnostics and DPF region. Moving further to the right, you'll find the engine diagnostics and engine inhibit. We'll stay in the same vicinity and just move upward about the left knee area where we'll start with your pump shift. On the left, you have instructions from road to pump. As we move to the right of the pump shift, you'll find instructions from pump to road. To activate, simply pull the yellow collar and slide the handle lever downward. On the left-hand side, you'll find two green indicators. One, pump engaged and OK to pump. If those are active, you can exit the cab for pump operations. As we move to the left of the dash, you're going to find your ignition and start switch. Moving just to the right, you'll find a small switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This will activate and deactivate all of your emergency lights with one button. Moving just to the right, you'll find your parking lights and headlights. Moving further to the right, you'll find a switch labeled Panel. This will brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. Let's move to the dash cluster now. First, starting on the left-hand side, you'll find your transmission, oil, DEF level, and water temperature. To the right, you'll find your front air and rear air, volts and fuel level. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information for your apparatus will display above and below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find a push in for windshield wiper fluid. Rotate right to left for your windshield wiper control speed. As we move further to the right, you'll find your climate control for heat, air conditioning, and defrost. As we move down about the right knee of the operator, you'll find your main mirror control and convex mirror controls. Moving further to the right, you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. It is the yellow diamond. Moving to the right, you'll find your Allison digital push button transmission pad. Moving just up from this location, we'll find our engine brake on and off switch. 
We have a settings for that engine brake for low, medium, and high. A selector switch for siren and horn. A selector switch for air horn or electric siren. And then also mirror heat and load manager. You can see on the far right we have two green indicators. When those switches have been activated, the green light will illuminate with inside the switch indicating it's active. Let's move up from this location overhead of the operator where you'll find emergency master, roof light, front warning light, side warning light, lower rear warning light, and upper rear warning light. Same goes for this. When the light is active, the green light will illuminate indicating the switch is actively on. Let's move further to the right where you'll find your siren control and PA speaker system. Moving further to the right, you'll find your EQ2B. This is your electronic siren. Moving further to the right in the very center areas where you'll find your seatbelt information display, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green indicating they're in the seat and belted. As we move just down to the lower section, you'll find a red light. If it's flashing indicating do not move your truck, you have a compartment door open or door open. As we move to the center, you'll find your air conditioning unit. Let's take a quick look from the front and move to the very rear section where you'll find two SCBA seats uh, in the very rear section of your apparatus. Let's move now to the rear section of the cab where you'll find at the hinge point a grab handle for gaining access in and out. You'll also find two seats in the rear, rear facing, and also in the very center, your access location to the rear portion of the engine. This location here with the lift and turn latch will gain access for your daily checks for your oil and also transmission. As we're in this area, let's go ahead and take a quick look around the inside of the cab area. You can see you have two forward facing seats and also two rear facing seats, all equipped with SCBA bottles. As we move now to the officer position, you'll find within this area, also attached to the door panel, warning labels. At the floor space, you'll find your electronic siren and air horn. As we move further to the right on the A pillar, you'll find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. And as we move to the seat itself, you can see it also houses an SCBA bottle bracket. Let's move overhead in the officer space. You'll find push on and off red and white lights. As we move to the front section of the dash, on the left of the officer position, you'll find the push button for your air horn. You'll also find two barrel style 12 volt access points. Congratulations, Douglas, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire apparatus, job number 34512. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.